All right, uh, our next speaker, Alexander, is going to start talking to us today about microservices with uh, Spring Cloud and Ignite. And he's going to introduce uh, stateless microservices and then talk a bit about the pros and cons of microservices on the high load and latency. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to you. Uh, you can take it from here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexander Kozhenkov. And many of us use Spring in our applications and run them in clouds. And today we will talk about building stateful microservices based on Spring Cloud and Apache Ignite. Um, I'm a team lead at GridGain. Um, and as you know, GridGain develops distributed database Apache Ignite, while my team develops GridGain Control Center which is a tool for trouble, troubleshooting, monitoring, and managing Apache Ignite and, and grid game clusters. And Control Center itself uses Apache Ignite as a database and cache underneath. So what topics will we cover today? First, we will take a look at stateless microservices architecture and what disadvantages it has. Uh, then we find out when embedded cache can boost our application. And then we will talk about stateful microservices with an embedded database and what pre-requirements it has. Um, smart load balancing and two parts of it, service discovery and partition mapping. So let's get started. And that's what actually the architecture of a microservice looks like. We have an application that receives requests and selects something in a database or saves data there. And when we have intensive communication, we usually add a cache layer. The pro of this architecture is that it's pretty simple. Our application do doesn't store any state. So the scaling process is pretty simple too. Um, we can add a few more instances anytime to deal with the high load. And also we can scale every part of the service independently. If a database is a bottleneck, we can add more nodes to its cluster. And the same for the distributed cache. Anytime we can add more nodes. But it has cons too. And the first one is network latency. The application needs to get data from the cache via a network, as well as from the database. And this chain of calls increases the overall time between request and response. Also, all of these network calls are potential points of failure. Even if we assume that our database and cache ne always respond correctly, never crashed, uh, we still can get an error because of network communication back and forth. And finally, data serialization and deserialization is a problem because the application serializes data before sending a request to the cache, then the cache deserializes it and serializes the response again, and the same for the database. So this process may take a majority of CPU time for simple services. So what can we do better? And one of the options here is to use embedded cache. Uh, this is the previous architecture, but we, uh, some cache data sources support embedded mode, for example, Apache Ignite and Hazelcast. And we can move the cache layer into the application layer. Nodes will connect to each other and unite to a cluster. So we will have sharding and replication out of box as it is for external distributed cache. 
Um, and if we have partitioned cache, each node will have several partitions, but not all of them. So when the load balancer addresses the request to the instance with requested partition, uh, we will have fast reads. But otherwise, if the node does not have requested data, it will transfer data from the node that has it. So when we don't hit the cache, the embedded mode doesn't really have benefits compared to the external cache. And another option is to have replicated cache when each node has all partitions. Uh, and there, our reads always are always fast because we always hit the cache. Uh, but writes become slow because we need to synchronize them with all nodes. And for large clusters, like 20 nodes, even 20 nodes, each write operation will be synchronized with um, 19 nodes. So something may go wrong and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But it still works great for dictionaries because this type of data is changed really rarely. So writes problem is not an issue in this case. And just a few words about affinity allocation. If we have, for example, two tables, users and orders, we may want to store all information about the same user on one node. Uh, I mean all primary partitions for a specific user on one node and backups on others. And it helps to avoid data transferring when we do selects with joins because distributed join is an expensive operation. And Apache Ignite allows to do it with affinity allocation where we can just uh, say uh, that the affinity key for the order table is user ID, which must be a part of the primary key. And after that, all entries with the same user ID will be stored in partitions with exactly same numbers, therefore on the same nodes. Of course, partitions count for both caches must be equal. So what if we have smart load balancer that knows about affinity allocation and sends requests directly to application instances with requested data. We will have faster reads uh, always because um, the application has all needed information on the local node. And write operations uh, will be also fast because we have partitioned cache and we need to synchronize it only with backups. But can we go deeper? And what if we move the entire database to the application layer? You know, Apache Ignite supports native persistence and uh, we can create two different data regions, um, the in-memory data regions uh, for the cache and persistent for uh, data in the database. The affinity key logic will be exactly the same for both data regions. I mean, we can run one uh, Apache Ignite um, embedded node uh, on each application instance. And the application will use it, uh, will use this node uh, for both cache and database layers. Uh, but the question here is how to route requests. And there are uh, two ways to implement load balancer uh, on client side and on server side. For the client side, we can use the Sprint Cloud load balancer library, which will route requests right in client applications. And for the server side, we can use Sprint Cloud Zool and its successor Sprint Cloud Gateway. We will talk about differences between these two approaches later. Um, and the actual logic related to the request routing will be similar for client and server side, 
load balancers. So we will use client side as an example. And here we need to implement two methods. Uh, the first one to get the whole list of available services. Uh, so we need some sort of service discovery that will say what nodes are registered and online. And the second method returns the list uh, of nodes for the particular request. And for this purpose, we need to know about partitioning mapping in the cluster. So uh, what data are stored on each node. And there are several approaches to do service discovery. The most popular one in the Spring Cloud world is Spring Cloud Eureka. Uh, it's like a separate service where all application instances are registered on startup and load balancer can get this information anytime. But keep in mind that Apache Ignite uh, has its own discovery SPI. Uh, so all our nodes, all our embedded nodes already know about actual topology. And we can send changes, um, for instance, to message broker uh, and subscribe to it by load balancer. For example, you can run a service inside the distributed computing in Apache Ignite, and the service will send updates after topology changes. Um, or another way is to just run a thick client node inside the load balancer. In this case, the load balancer can subscribe to discovery events directly and immediately react to topology changes. Um, so the first method of the interface is covered. And then we need to know where the requested data is stored. And if we use thick client node, we can simply get the affinity function of the target cache and apply it uh, to the affinity key. And as a result, uh, we will get the actual node. So basically, that's how we uh, can implement uh, the second method. And uh, here we have a question how to provide affinity key uh, with our requests. And um, we may parse, for example, path variables or request bodies, uh, or we can uh, have a contract to use a specific header. Uh, with an affinity key value. And also um, to provide more information for the load balancer, such as the host and port where the request should be routed to, uh, we can use user attributes in Ignite instances. And they will be visible for load balancer on topology changes events. Uh, so what's the difference between client and server-side load balancer. Um, first one is implementation, because thick client nodes are included in the topology. And mm, there is an overhead because of that. Uh, so it's OK to use them in server-side uh, load balancer, but uh, we can have too many client applications. So for the client nodes, uh, client site load balancer, it's better to have a well-known affinity function uh, not to request it often. Uh, then logic encapsulation. And here, server site load balancer can hide all the routing logic, which is definitely the benefit. So uh, for client nodes, uh, for client side load balancer, every single client contains load balancer logic. So if you want to change it, um, we need to change it everywhere in every single client. And it's a pain when we have different uh, clients with different release cycles um, in our environment. Then network latency, and here, client load balancer has minimum latency. 
because we don't have to proxy requests here. Client sends uh, requests directly to target application instances. And we have two additional hops with server site load balancer because we have a proxy server between a client and a target application. Um, then speaking about complexity, if we talk about architecture complexity, then server side load balancer seems more complicated because we have plus one additional service that we need to deploy and monitor, and it may be a single point of failure so that we need to have multiple instances of it. And um, we don't have any additional services for client side load balancing, but the drawback here is that the client business logic is mixed up with load balancing logic. So our clients, uh, our client applications do not follow the single responsibility principle. Uh, and uh, another important thing is untrusted client. Uh, client side load balancer uh, can't really uh, used with untrusted clients. Uh, for example, single page front end applications because it's just not secured. Uh, we don't want to share our internal routing logic uh, to untrusted clients. But for server-side load balancing, it's totally fine to work with any clients because routing logic is encapsulated here. So uh, stateful microservices with embedded cache and database have pros. And the first one is that we run embedded nodes within the same GV and JVM, even more within the same process. And Java calls much, much faster than network requests. Our latency becomes minimum because of that. And we have fewer points of failure because we communicate less uh, via network. Even communication between nodes in cache and database clusters becomes less. Uh, in stateless architecture, the application keeps a connection with a random database node. And we may request entries that are stored on other nodes. So it needs additional data transfer. But with embedded database and smart load balancing, we send requests directly to the instance with needed data. Also, uh, we don't have so much overhead with serialization and deserialization. We still serialize data uh, because Apache Ignite stores binary objects in the off heap. But we don't need to serialize and deserialize before and after every network call. Um, but stateful microservices is not a silver bullet, and they have a cost. And the first con here is the scaling process. Uh, now every application instance becomes a database node. So if you want to scale it, we need to scale the whole database. And scaling up is relatively simple. Uh, we only need to wait for the partition map exchange, and then uh, it will be good. Uh, but scale down for a database is always tricky, and it's hard to do it dynamically. Also, uh, maintenance become harder. Uh, for example, if you if you want to um, update your version of Apache Ignite, uh, you need to either stop all nodes or use the rolling upgrade feature which is available since the grid gain enterprise edition. And architecture complexity becomes more complicated. Uh, 
on the one hand, we have fever services because of embedded nodes. Uh, we don't need to deploy cache cluster and database cluster separately. But on the other hand, uh, we are fixing the architecture with a particular affinity location, with a particular uh, affinity key. And if we want to change uh, our logic uh, of affinity allocation later, um, we need to, to run a majority migration of data that will refill <clears throat> data in our caches. Um, so it's become uh, much more complicated. So uh, stateless microservices architecture is a popular model, uh, but one of the reasons here is that, and one of the reasons here, because it's pretty simple, but we have many requ uh, network calls here. And uh, because of that, we have uh, growing latency as well as potential points of failures. Also, serialization uh, overhead takes place. Uh, but we can boost it with embedded cache, especially for dictionaries, because we can use replicated cache and all our, our nodes will have all the data. So we will always have fast reads. And if you want to minimize network latency and improve performance, uh, we can add uh, the embedded database to the application. But here uh, we should implement a smart load balancer uh, to use it efficiently. Uh, so uh, we should know which nodes are online and we should rely on sort of service discovery uh, and know about um, partitioning mapping, which node, uh, which node uh, stores some data, some partitions uh, to redirect it properly. Um, yeah. And I showed some code on the slides today and here in the GitHub repository, you can find the complicated, uh, completed uh, code of the example. Um, and now I'm ready to answer your questions. Okay, thank you for your presentation, Alexander. Um, let me just run through. Uh, there was a lot of chatter in the uh, uh, chat in the comments, so I'm just scanning through to get the the questions up from there. Give me one second. Um, yeah, sure. Let me start with uh, one of my own and then I'll go through afterwards. So uh, do you use uh, stateful microservices architecture in the uh, control center? Um, yeah, that'll be my first question. Um, yeah, the short answer is no. And it's because um, we have a WebSocket connection between uh, clusters and control center and between browsers and control center. And relation between users and clusters is many to many. And for many to many relation, uh, affinity collocation doesn't really help mm -hmm. because you have to choose one of them <clears throat> and we can't because of the web sockets. Uh, so we considered this approach, but it's hard to implement it without significant changes in our business logic. That's yeah. why we don't use it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> is it possible to use other databases for this approach? Um, yeah, sure. In the Java world, you can, for example, use Hazelcast to cache data and Apache Cassandra as a database. You have to tune Apache Cassandra a bit, but it's still possible. Um, but you will have to make uh, sure that partitions uh, of both cache and database are on the same nodes. So the partition number must be the same and affinity function must be the same. 
Um, and the benefit of using Apache Ignite here is that it's suitable for both cache and database layers. So you don't need to, uh, to do additional efforts with data collocation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how do you handle warmed instances of Spring Cloud functions in an Ignite node? Uh, well, uh, we can't actually uh, warm up instance instantly uh, because yeah, we have to populate data. Um, so actually, maybe there is an improvement. Maybe we can run sort of operation like uh, cache load uh, to to populate cache on startup. Um, but I'm not sure maybe it will have uh, certain drawbacks here. OK. Uh, is there an offline version of Control Center to install locally? Uh, yes, of course. You can use uh, on-premise version, which can be downloaded from our website. And you have to deploy it on your own environment. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't see any other public questions. So my last one to you will be, how is the upcoming Ignite 3 uh, uh, going to affect this architecture? Um, yeah, as I remember, uh, Apache Ignite 3 will get rid of thick client nodes. Uh, so you have to choose a different way to use it with stateful microservices, but you still can use um, service, uh, you can run a service inside distributed computing and send topology updates and partition mapping to a message worker, for example. And also what I'm waiting for is a columnar uh, data storage in addition to existing one. Um, and um, that will be introduced in grid gain nine, as I remember which is great for some types of data, especially for control center itself. Um, and it will be available in Nebula, um, but for stateful microservices, we, you will have to use grid gain platform, um, not Apache Ignite. Okay, all right. Um, thank you for your time. Thank you for your presentation. I'm sure the audience appreciates it and I hope uh, they've learned something from it.